Church, I don't know um, if I'm the only one here in this challenge from God, kind of a dare. Call to me, seek me out. Just like God took care of those people back then, he can take care of you now. Take a step of faith, take a risk, however you want to look at it. He's just waiting for that.
Stronger now to raise me from the grave. Your love is greater now to take away my shame. Sing it. My God is stronger now to raise me from the grave. Your love is greater now to take away my shame. Sing that again. It's strong enough to raise me from the grave. Your love is great enough to take away my shame. Your mercy reigns. My God is making new. I can't stop. today, church. Yeah. 
There's honey in the rock, water in the storm, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know everything I need you got. There's honey in the rock.
Trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust. Good morning. Thank you, worship team. If you are blessed by the worship team today and by the Lord's presence through that, let's give a round of applause. We thank them for that. I said before, I don't know when the last time I said this, when I got involved in Coast Community Church uh, uh, at first and started like worshiping and music and doing what I would call like worship, like repeating and just kind of staying in that moment and like meditating and having that moment, that was very foreign to me. I came from a background of first, second, and last, and you were done with that part, and you got on to the, the preaching, and that was something that God had to work on in me. Now, I did have motivation to stand during worship because at that time we were in a very small hole in the wall with brown metal folding chairs, so that may have been why I stood. That may have helped me. I don't know. But I'll let's say this, that it, it, the, it was really... The, the music was really ministering to me today, and I, I do mean that sincerely. We have a great worship team that puts a lot of time and effort into this that, you know, no one sees or, not say doesn't appreciate, because I know we appreciate the music here, and, and it's great, but just know there's a lot of work and effort uh, that goes into that. But I'm, I just want to share the word real quick that was spoken to me uh, during this time of worship was we were talking about and, and singing about the more I seek you, the more I find you. I'm very familiar with that. That's very, like, seek and you shall find. I understand that. But what really was getting me today was that the more I find you, the more I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I was just saying how good the love of God is. And uh, just in the scripture... In Ephesians, Paul says, tells the church, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. It was just two things there of just the concept of I can't say I've ever drawn closer to God truly and thought that that was terrible. I had a bad moment. Every time I find him, is good. I love him more. Is when I'm separated or when I'm misunderstanding or getting caught in my feelings or whatever I'm doing. But when I find him, I just love him more. And to also understand that right now, and this is not for me, this is just for all of us right now. If you can just understand this a little more today, I think we can all leave here with a lot more peace in our spirit and draw a lot closer to God. It's just to know, understand today that God loves you right where you are at right now. Whatever you're going, whatever going on in your life, Whatever's going on in your relationships, whatever's going on in your personal life, whatever's going on in your heart, whatever's going on in your spirit right now, whether you're on a high or a low, God can't possibly love you any more than he does right this second. That is what surpasses knowledge. That's what we can't comprehend because I don't know about you, but maybe you find people where you get to know them more and you like them less. You're like, oh my God, 
they're toxic or they're creepy or they're what you sometimes the more we find people and find out about people the less we love them but the more we find god the more we love Amen. and no matter what you've done look grace continues to find us amen his mercies continue continue to find us so right now just want you to know this before we move on that you are here for a purpose is part of his plan for you to be here for you to receive his word into your heart for you to come in contact with his word and his spirit today and i truly thank you for being here and welcome here so let's give the lord a round of applause because he's worthy of it all he's worthy of a lot more than that but we're going to give him the praise and glory and hand clapping and shouting we can do today so let's participate in worship today amen and our time that we have together is a great day i don't know but i like it a little brisk maybe i got your blood pumping outside a little bit it's been nice i think uh, we are going to have the offering bags passed around for tithes gifts and offerings if you are visiting with us we thank you let's give our visitors a round of applause we thank you for being here we welcome you here Seeing some of y'all for a few times. I'm going to stop calling y'all a visitor or a guest pretty soon. I appreciate y'all being here. Uh, just a few announcements going on. One, if you haven't been on Wednesday evening at 6.15, I encourage you to come. If you've been coming on Wednesday evenings, raise your hand if you've been enjoying it. If you've been enjoying the time here, we got some kids, we got some teens, we got some adult small groups going on. It's been a great time had by all. Jody and I have been kind of leading uh, the kids, and Jody's been primarily doing this, been fantastic, been having great times of ministry, minimal injuries, I mean, all this, when you're in kids' ministry, is all good things, these are all very positive things, so if you haven't come, come uh, join us, we love that, so we have something for all ages, and there is nursery provided, if you have real, real, real little ones, that's okay too, bring them too, we'd love to have you come, even just once to uh, try it out, we appreciate that. Uh, again, we're going to have women's Bible study tonight at 6 o'clock at the home of Rebecca Ray. So if you haven't been part of that red letter study, she is waving her hand frantically back there saying, please come to my home. Please come. And we love they, I know they would love to have you there uh, for that. And I have to mention Seder dinner. If you haven't already signed up for Seder dinner, we would strongly encourage you to do that. If you've been coming for a long time, we know you probably signed up because it's awesome. You don't want to miss it. If you've never been... Kind of get out of the box and say, well, like, what, what is Seder dinner? Well, um, it is where we celebrate as Gentiles, as Christians grafted into a vine, this really Jewish tradition of the Passover meal. You know, think about when you're reading the Bible, the Passover meal. These are very churchy religious things. Passover meal, the Lord's Supper. Well, these are, these are actual real traditions and meals. And so this is something that we uh, share. And so it's a family experience. And you say, well, I don't have any family that comes here. I just come by. But that's okay, because when you come for Seder dinner, you'll be sitting at a table with people who will be your family for the evening. You'll celebrate. You'll have like a table, mom and dad. It's like a full service. This is a full meal. This isn't just like I eat one little dot or whatever there is, that ceremonial plate, which people have mixed feelings about. As on the ceremonial plate, let's say some people do enjoy it, but the point of the ceremonial plate, and as you will see if you will come, is not just meant to be enjoyed. It has a point and a, a purpose and, and a, a story and uh, a meaning behind each item that you partake in that plate. So it's very, very special. Love for you to come. It's April 6th. Uh, the cost is $30 for 13 and up, $20 for 8 to 12, and then $10 for child care. Um, and that includes just a basic meal. They won't, the kids probably wouldn't eat the ceremonial plate if they're little kids either. So, but we're going to have just like regular food uh, for them back there. So if you haven't already signed up, please do that. There's sign-up forms uh, on the information table, like when you walk in the front door there. Love to have you sign up. Go ahead and pay if you can uh, because we'd love to go ahead and get all these items done because it'll be here really before you know it. It's basically here. So the prep and what do we do? We meet here. We move all these chairs, we get all straightened out, and we turn this into a great dining hall. So i uh, love to have you come, participate in that, and uh, be blessed by the Seder dinner experience there. All right, so we are going to have the offering bag come forward and pray for this offering. I do want to mention a, a prayer request. Uh, Jonathan mentioned to me today, he's got, there are some doors that God is going to be opening. I'm going to be praying for that in just one minute. Thank you. She, she always keeps me on point. Faith is awesome at that. And he's got some stuff going on in his family 
that is an opportunity right now where God's going to be either closing or opening some doors. And uh, we're just going to pray for Jonathan and family as and we're going to pray in agreement together that God's will be done as important decisions are being made and things are happening. Uh, so we're going to pray for them right now as well. All right, if you would pray in agreement with me. God, we just thank you. We love you. God, we thank you of how great your love is for us, God. God, if we can just find you today. And God, you are here. You are here to be found. God, let us have the courage. Let us have the strength. Let us have the sensitivity. Let us have the humility right now to open our hearts to you. God, let you speak into our hearts and speak into our lives today. God, maybe today is a day we need to make a decision. God, maybe there's somebody here who's been coming, you've been knocking on their heart, but God, they haven't truly let you in. They're not saved. They haven't received forgiveness for their sin. They haven't cried out to you, Lord and Savior of their life. God, we pray that they would make that decision today. God, maybe others are Christians in, in the room right now and have big decisions going on or uncertainties or fears or something going on right now. God, we're just praying for breakthrough today by your spirit. God, we're praying for Jonathan and his family. God, and God, you know everything going on with that situation. And we know that you open doors that no man can shut. And you shut doors that no man can open. God, you're over all. God, I thank you right now that you have Jonathan and their entire family's best interest at heart, that you are going to be providing a, a way. And God, I just pray that they continue to follow you in that way. I thank you that they are making this a prayer issue, that they are lifting you up in this situation, because you are faithful, Lord, and we thank you for that. God, we just pray blessings on them and their family. God, if anyone is not feeling well, they're not here because they're not feeling well. They're here, they're not feeling well. God, we're just praying for healing in their body because you are the healer. And finally, we thank you for the money that's in this bag. God, we pray that you continue to do what you do with everything, including money, God. Just more than we possibly think possible. God, we just pray that this money is used in accordance with your spirit as a kingdom purpose. God, you just work your glory, even through the use of this money, somehow, some way. We'll give you all the thanks for that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
And good morning, church. Give Jesus a round of applause, please. So glad to see you here today on the day that God has graced us with and blessed us with. And if you're breathing and your heart is beating, things are good. And God wants to take you right there, heart beating, lungs are breathing, and do a whole lot more with you. We just have to make ourselves available to hear what he's got to say and be sensitive to his spirit. Working with the teens on Wednesday evenings, as I have been doing with small groups, um, it's going great, really great. Last Wednesday, um, we talked about a little bit about the birth of the church, the day of, of Pentecost, and we talked about mighty rushing wind is what they heard, and they saw what was as if tongues of fire raining down upon them, and of course, then the spiritual gifts began to happen, and speaking in tongues began to happen. But um, as we were talking about movies we've seen, and uh, they said, well, well, Dean, is it sort of like, like a, you see a little bitty tiny flame hanging out over the top of their head? I thought, that's what you see in movies. I'm not so sure that's what it was. So after we talked for a while about what they thought happened on the day of Pentecost when Holy Spirit flowed down and the church was born, they decided that the mighty rushing wind was the bare minimum, bare minimum the power of a tornado and probably more like the power of a Cat 5 hurricane. And it lifted the rooftop off and the people up out of their seats or from where they were standing, and it was just massive. And we came to the conclusion that at minimum, um, the tongues of fire was a flamethrower. <laughs> at minimum. And that at greatest, uh, a towering inferno. So... If we ever make a movie with teenagers and myself, there will be a Cat 5 hurricane and a raging inferno to represent Pentecost. I like the way they think. Really, why shouldn't we think that way? We're talking about God, right? We're talking about God the author and the, the creator of, of everything, the power that is. Now, last Sunday, we got to talk about manna, did we not? Yeah, we did. And the main point that I wanted you to take home last Sunday about the manna is that God is going to provide for you, but when he provides for us, there are usually some guidelines that come with his uh, givings and his sharings and his gifts. They were told, I'm going to give you manna every morning, gather up enough that you need, take care of business, do what needs to be done, but don't hoard any. Don't keep any manna to yourself for the night. Well, some people didn't want to listen to God's rules. Some people didn't think that God uh, would provide for them properly. So in their wisdom wisdom they kept some and the next morning they guess they wanted to get up and eat their yesterday's manna before they went out and gathered up some more and the old manna stank i don't know if i'm using proper english or not stink stank stunk i don't know stink stank stunk got it okay it stinked anyway it was bad and it was full of maggots well, they did what God told them not to do. So I think it's always wise to do what God says and to listen to him when he says, don't. There's a rhyme and there's a reason. And even if we don't understand the rhyme or the reason, it doesn't matter. He's God. All right. So we talked about manna. You shouldn't hoard it. Don't try to hold on to it. Let God give you fresh manna daily. Let's read from the collection of the Psalms. 
We read this recently when I got back from doing my uncle's funeral in Texas. And most people read this at funerals. I shared that with you. But it is not a funeral psalm. It is not a death psalm. It's actually a life psalm. Psalm number 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, when you get to know God and you, let's say, you actually give your life to Jesus, you're going to be stepping out of the way things are done in the world and hopefully stepping into the way things are done in God's realm, and in God's kingdom. This life psalm, not death psalm, says that God is our peace, our strength, our comfort, our provider, our everything. And he said that he anoints us with oil and he makes our cup to overflow. So, here we have water, and here we have us, and here we have Stepping into God's ways of doing things, okay? So God comes along and wants to provide. Does God provide a sip? He could. Just a touch. Just a little bit. And even that little sip would be better than what we had because it's, it's from God. We might like it, and we might say, God, I I just want a little bit more. He says, okay, a little bit more. And we like it. We taste and see that God is good. We might want some more. Well, we we need to remember what it says in the Bible. My cup gets sips. That's not what it says. My cup Catches dribbles. Didn't say that either. What did it say? My cup is filled to the brim. It doesn't even say that. My cup overflows with God stuff. Like this. Dean, it's almost full. You're right. Dean, you're almost to the brim. Uh huh. Dean, it's almost full. You might want to stop. Dean, de- uh, Dean, you're you're spilling it. Dean, you're making a mess. Dean, you're still pouring. Dean, your cup is full. Dean, the entire glass, the outside of the glass, is getting covered with water. Dean, you can stop anytime you want. The cup is full. Dean, 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 the cup is full. That's what God wants to do for you and me. And what about all that overflow God stuff? It's touching God's kingdom through you. Ah. And I also noticed that if my cup's overflowing, the outside of the cup is getting 
drenched too. Hmm. I think Jesus once called the Pharisees and Sadducees as wall givers. Whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. And he said, you know, you are so worried about how you look. Why don't you clean up the inside? Why don't you clean up the inside? Clean it up nice. And then the outside will follow suit. Clean up the inside. And the outside might start matching what's on the inside. You see, when, when God handles business, he's cleaning up the inside, and he's cleaning up the outside, and he's cleaning up everything around him. Just cleaning everything up. Awesome. And there's always more where that came from. Doesn't stop. Thank you, God. God is good. But, 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 but. We don't often live here. Wish we did. We should. We could. We don't. Lord, I'm coming to you, Lord. I've had enough of this world. I need something different. I need me some Jesus. So I'm going to take a little step into your world. I kind of want to do it. I want to kind of do it your way, God. I, I really do. Take my step over here. All right, Lord. Give me what you got. Stop! Not that much, Lord. I just want it. Okay, a little more. Ah! Stop, stop. I just wanted a sip. Lord, Lord, make a deal with you. I've provided my own utensil. Your own what? My own cup. To kind of help you, Lord, you know, help you out. You're a big guy. You got a lot on your plate. And I want to be helpful to you. So I have provided today, Lord, for your use, my own cup. Could you give me just, just a taste, Lord, today? Just, just a taste. Well, would you like me to put it in there for you? No, I'll do that myself, too. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Lord. Are we done here? If I need you later today, you'll see me. I'll be holding out my cup. But for the time being, I'm good. Say, Dean, that's not what people do. Oh, really? 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 We don't do anything like that. Dean, I really want you to go apologize to that person you've been hating on for a while. Ah, stop the poor. Dean, you've not been worshiping like you should, and I really want you to get down on your hands and knees and on your face and fall prostrate on the floor. To me. Lord, and I need you to start reading my word a whole lot more. How about, you know, at least five or six, seven chapters? Lord, I'll make a deal with you. I will do a verse a day for the good of the cause. He anoints my head with oil and my cup overflows. This is what God wants. 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 That's how it's supposed to be with Holy Spirit as well. We don't want to dabble in Holy Spirit. We want Holy Spirit. We shouldn't want to just dabble in God. We should want God. We shouldn't want to just taste God. We should want to experience God. 
We shouldn't want God to just change one little aspect of our life, but change everything about us. Take care of the inside, and the outside will take care of itself. In Joel, chapter 2, 27, 28, 29, it says this. Then you will know that I am in Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my saints and my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Now, some will tell you that the Old Testament does not prophesy about the birth of the church. Some will tell you the Old Testament does not prophesy or predict an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Some will tell you that the ancient prophets and righteous people of the Lord had no clue at all, ever, what was going to happen in the future. Or understand the concept of a church or a Messiah. Folks, they talked about the Messiah all the time. They were always waiting for the Messiah, the one that would be their deliverer. Joel prophesied that there will be an outpouring of the Spirit. And people will dream dreams and prophecies will take place and great stuff will happen. Even Apostle Paul who was a very learned Hebrew scholar and Pharisee, quoted the Old Testament and quoted Joel, talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit. I believe God's Word is true from here to here and everything in between. And God knew what was going on back here, and God knows what's going on up here. And it all fits together. That's why I love Passover. You understand the, the suffering of the Christ, the death and the resurrection, and the Passover a whole lot more when you understand the feast of the Passover. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm, 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 could you give me a little taste today? I, I'm, I'm feeling sad. And I'm really kind of mad at you because what I asked you to do for me the other day, you didn't do. And I wanted you to fix that wife of mine. I wanted you to fix that husband of mine. I wanted you to fix those kids. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Lord. And I asked you to give me some money because I'm running short. And <sighs> Great Santa in the sky, you just haven't delivered. So I, I just want a touch of you today because you're such a... <sighs> Debbie Downer, you're such a spoil sport. You're so, you say you love me, and then you just give me a little of that. Dean, that's all you ask for. You want more, Dean? No, no. I'll get back with you on that, Lord. I, I have some thinking to do. I need to contemplate. I need to meditate for a while. And after I've done that, I, we'll talk. When are we going to talk, Dean? I'll let you know, Lord. I'll let you know. Do you know what happens when water just sits? One, it evaporates. And two, if it sits there long enough and doesn't evaporate all, it grows things. Do you know what it grows? Algae. 
bacteria, stuff, gunk, slime. So when this gets nice and gunky and slimy, I'd like to introduce you to my Jesus. Stagnant, lifeless, soiled, slimy water. When water just sits in a puddle, we know what happens around here on the coast. Mosquitoes love to lay their eggs in it. Stagnant water begins to stink. In fact, it stinks, stinks, don't. Or we can King James it. It stinketh. Stinketh. God, on the other hand, says, Oh, Dean, stinking too. There's more where that came from. A whole lot more. Oh, Lord, thank you. Lord, I love you. Thank you, Lord. You're awesome, Lord. Let me introduce you to my Jesus. Luke 4. 1819, Jesus speaking and what he calls us to do. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. You know who your greatest, greatest oppressor is? Aside from you, aside from you, your greatest oppressor is Satan. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's what, God, that's what Jesus came to do. He said, and what I've been doing, you will do, and a whole lot more. And lo, I will be with you always. Until the very end of the age. Lord, I can't do it without you. I know you can't. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Lord, people don't listen to what I have to say. You know, I haven't prayed to you in about four or five weeks. I used to feel really close to you. I'd like to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I, I, I'd, I'd like to do your work. Can you help me out? No, not, Lord. The cup. Okay, Dean. Okay, Lord, I, I, I'm good. I, I, I think I'm ready to go witness. Prepare and proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. We say, Dean, I've been the stagnant water for a long time. I don't want to be the stagnant water. But it's the way I've been for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30, 40 years. I don't know anything else. Seek him. And you will find him. My child, 
it's never too late for you. He anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever 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 and ever. God has a lot to offer. His poured out blood, his broken body, his resurrection, anointing with the Holy Spirit, peace in time of difficulty, shalom, hope, expectation, miracles, praise, security, and ripping away our low self-esteem. Yes, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This doesn't go well with the Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to pray, proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom and pray for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me. To proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. And recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever in closing John chapter 7 verse 38 Jesus speaking whoever believes in me all of him everything he's got to offer as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow within them. Amen. It does not sound quite the same if you were to say, whoever sort of kind of believes in Jesus, as Scripture has taught, thimbles of stagnant water will grow slime within them. Mm. This is God. And He wants to fill you up so you can contain no more and it overflows. Give Jesus an amen. amen. Give Jesus a round of applause. And let's get ready to worship the Almighty God. Y'all go ahead and stand with us. Standing here in your presence, thinking of the good things you have done. Waiting here patiently just to hear you still small voice again. Holy, 
righteous, faithful to the end, my Savior, my healer, redeemer, and friend, I will worship you for who you are, I will worship you for who you are, I will worship you for who you are, Jesus. In your presence, of the good things you have done, waiting here it's patiently just to hear you still small voice again. Holy, righteous, faithful to the end, Savior, my healer, redeemer, and friend, I will worship you. you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are, Jesus. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are. I will worship you for who you are, Jesus. Expectation 
longing for a love insatiable desire Jesus lead me to the Father's arms comforting words build hope to carry on how can I live Without your gentle, soothing voice Where can I go to know the fruits of love and joy? Lead me to the Father Lead me to the Father To the point of least resistance, place a simple trust and one of simple faith. Only you can take me to His home. We will be united. Hey, hey, hey. 
Sing that again.
Thank you, church. Y'all are awesome. Thank y'all for being here this week. We look forward to seeing y'all Wednesday.
this is the prayer from all of us, all of our hearts to you. All about you, every breath, every step, every moment, every day. We're desperate, we're desperate for it. All about you, Jesus. Come baptize us. 